Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. One of my favorite things about my new car is the steering wheel. It has the M package, so it has that M steering wheel and it looks absolutely amazing. The only part that I don't really care for is it doesn't have paddle shifters, which I think is really important, especially if you have an automatic. So today, what we're going to do is we are going to do the F80 M3 paddle shifter retrofit. Now this may change from car to car depending on what wheel your car is configured with and if your car is already pre-wired. But today, we are going to be installing the paddle shifters. We're going to be installing the small harness, and this is actually what connects your car to the paddle shifters. We're going to be installing this new back plate, and that's just so I don't have to cut out these notches. The last thing that you need are these special wires, and I'll have a link to all of these products in the description. Now, typically when you're doing this, and just to kind of start off here, we're going to be installing one of these wires by your passenger footwell, and the wire needs to go all the way up to the steering wheel, which is where the other end is going to connect, and we're going to show you all of that. So pretty much what you need to do is you need to buy two of these wires. You can see I need some soldering here. And then you need about 18 inches of wire in between. Now when I bought these, I essentially got four for the price of two. So what I did is I actually just cut the ends off of two of them. And as you can see, I went through and I soldered all four of them together. But you don't need to buy four. Depending on what price you get, you could always just get some 22 gauge wire and just solder it all together. So it's nice and long like this. Now before we get started, as you'd expect, and as we always say, whenever you're working on electronics, go ahead and disconnect that battery, especially today, because we're working with an airbag. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this installation, but what we're going to do is we are going to start with the signal wire. So we're going to show you how to run this, and then we'll go through how to remove your wheel, how to put it back on, and all of that fun stuff. So what we're doing now is we need to get to a module that is under this kick plate. So to get to it, go ahead, just lift up on this trim very gently and pry it off like so. Now once you pull this piece of trim off, most of the time what's going to happen are the tabs will get stuck in here. So what you can do is just go ahead. You don't need any kind of special tools. You just pry this off and you just slide these back into the grooves like so. And then what you're able to do is just, after you get them all done, you can just press it back into place when we're done. So go ahead and set that out of the way. All right, next what you need to do is go ahead and take a 10 millimeter socket and under your glove box, there's two 10 millimeter bolts. There's one about right here, and then there's one right over here. So just go ahead and loosen those. Then what you can do is just go ahead and get your fingers under this piece of plastic. Just gently rock it down. So if you have a 12 volt down here, you can go ahead and disconnect that, and then there's the light. Just go ahead and disconnect that and take this whole piece out of the way. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and remove this kick plate. So to do so, just go ahead, get your hand under here, just pull up. There's a tab down at the top and there's a tab down at the bottom. So here you can see those. So there's the one at the bottom, one at the top. There's actually one at the side that I didn't tell you about either. So just go ahead and set this out of the way. All right, so once you have that panel up, you can see the different harnesses. So at the top, you see there's one, two, three, four across. Uh, I don't have one currently in that far right spot. So what we need to do is we need to get to A1737B. So basically what that means is it's the second one from the right. So go ahead. There's these little tabs on here. So if you, if you press on this little tab that's above that little lever right there, you can just take the lever, literally just pull it up, and then that'll come right out. The nice thing about working with this one is because it is on the end, you have the most room to work with it. All right, so once you've done that, what we need to do is we need to make sure that there is a wire in pin number five. So looking at this, it might be difficult for you initially to figure out how the numbering system works. So what you wanna do is first, this is actually a cover. There's two little tabs. There's one right here, and there's another one right there. So what I like to do is with a, with a pick tool, just go ahead and press that in, and you can start to slide part of the harness out. Then go on the other side, press in that tab, and then you'll be able to slide this entire thing off. All right, so when you were looking at this from the side, it's going to be just about impossible to see, so you just have to take my word for it. But right here, there's a little bit, there's a little number one, and then down here, there is an 18. So the way that this works is it's one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 18. Now you can see that in spot number five, I already have a pin, so my car is pre-wired for this. Now when I bought my wire, I didn't take my car apart to see if I needed it or not. I just went ahead and ordered it because I'd rather have it and not need it rather than need it and not have it. 
So here's a quick lesson on how the pin systems work in BMW. So first off, you need to make sure that you, you remove any cover. As you'll notice, there's, there's a little bit of a, a, a notch right here, and then there's another one right here. Basically what this does is it slides into this little groove and it locks everything in place. Again, it's going to be very difficult to see, but there's a little lock system that these pins use from BMW. So once it slides in, it'll lock. So just to show you how to do this, so what you want to do, if you don't already have that pin in there, you want to take your new pin, go over to pin number five, and then just take your pin, and it will just slide right into place, and it'll click in place. Now, if you accidentally click it in the wrong one, no problem. Make sure that this original cover here is off. Then what you want to do with a pick tool is just press right right down here, a little hard to do while looking at the camera, and then that'll slide right back out. And what you're basically doing is this piece right here is locking in place and you're just pressing it in. So if your car does not have this pre-wired, what you wanna do is go ahead and insert one of your wires into spot number five. Once that's all done, what you can do is just go ahead, line up the grooves and slide that back into place. Line everything up, push it in, push that lever down, make sure that it locks in place, and then you can go ahead and you can put this kick plate back on. Once you've done that, what you need to do is go ahead and just use a, a coat hanger or some kind of wire feeder, and you can just go ahead and feed this wire all the way through to under your steering wheel. Now when you're feeding that wire from the passenger footwell to the steering wheel, what I like to do normally is you feed the wire along here, you make sure that it's zip tied nice and tight. Once it gets to here, what you can do is you can rock out this panel. You can see that mine's out because I'm doing some product testing on a other product right there. What you do is you just get a trim tool, you put it in here and you pry this down. It has these two hooks that keep everything in place. So normally what you can do is you can feed like a hanger or a wire feeder down here, pull the wire up and then you can push it down this way and then that'll make sure that the wire ends up right where you need it. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to remove the airbag so that we can remove the wheel. So. You're going to just need a just a small flathead screwdriver. I think this one actually came in my car. So no special tools required. You could use an Allen key. You could use a flathead screwdriver. Um, there's many things that you can use. So to do this next part, what you want to do is go ahead. There's a little hole right here. And then you just stick this pretty much in straight. And then what it's going to do is it's going to release a clip. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit better in just a second. All right, so once you've popped the one side a little bit, just make sure that you make it so it doesn't pop out again. Just take your screwdriver on the other side. Sometimes it, it takes just a second to find it. Then you can just go ahead and just very carefully pull your airbag out. Again, at this point, make sure that your battery is 100% disconnected before you go any further. All right, so at this point, go ahead and just disconnect this clip right here. Then go ahead and set your airbag out of the way. They say that you should always keep it upright, so I'm just going to follow that and just leave it just like that. A few seconds ago, we said stick the screwdriver in and take the wheel off, but if it's your first time doing it, it's going to be a lot easier said than done. So I'm going to show you what to do. So once again, what you want to do is stick it in that hole right there. Try to stick it just straight in, and there's this release spring. So you can see that spring moving back and forth. That's really what you're aiming for. Sometimes people aim and they they hit the metal here and it doesn't do anything and they get frustrated. But what you're essentially doing is you're releasing this tab right there. It's pressing in this little piece of metal that's inside the circle and it's releasing the airbag. Same thing goes for the other side. You're just going to press the other side in. All right, while you're here, what you wanna do is just go ahead, just connect that other connection. All right, at this point, what we're going to do is we are going to remove the center nut of the wheel. So it is a 16 millimeter. So what you want to do is, I like to just put it on an extension so it's a little bit out. Um, it's a little bit awkward. I just try to hold the wheel with my knee, maybe two knees here. There we go. And once you get it loose, it'll come right out. It's a long bolt. So there you go, that's the bolt there. Again, it's a 16 millimeter. Now when you're doing this, you'll notice that the center column here has a little bit of a notch and the wheel 
also has a notch right there. Uh, it's just a little bit longer. So what we do is when we go to line this back up, you wanna go ahead and line that back up. If you wanna be extra safe, what you could do is you could also just get a marker and then mark both of the spots. All right, for this next part, you will need a plastic trim tool. Do not use anything metal. Where the leather comes and meets the plastic here, what you wanna do is just go ahead and just gently push it under there. That'll help you release these four pins. So if you could see here, there's one, two, three, four pins. And you can just go ahead and move that out of the way. Then I'll, I'll start from this side. What you can do is just very gently just start to pry this apart. Again, with your plastic trim tools, you'll be able to separate that. Go ahead and do it on the other side. Okay, so that's what that looks like. So basically what you're doing is you're releasing these clips right here. So it might be easier to see on the side. There's one, two, three, four on each side. So go ahead and set that out of the way. Then once you're here, on the left and on the right, there are these tabs right here. So basically what you wanna do is go ahead and pull them out and then press it down. And then that will release those. And we can, we can just go ahead and just let this hang here for a second. If you like to, you can go ahead and disconnect that. Um, there's not really a need to at this second. So I'm just gonna let it hang. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to remove this entire piece right here. You can see that it's held in by four screws. There's two on each side. So this is actually a seven millimeter. So you're going to need a pretty narrow seven because it needs to fit in this little space right here. So go ahead and remove all four of these. All right, and there's four. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and you can just slide this completely off. Okay, so once we're here, there are two plugs. You're going to see just more of a standard style and then one that has this pretty cool latching system. This right here is called A83-2B. And what we need to do is we need to check pin number three to make sure that it's pre-wired for the paddle shifters. If not, we need to go ahead and run a wire. All right, so just like before, you can't really access the pins unless you go ahead and, and unclip this little fastener right here. Now you can actually look in and see where the pins are, but we're just gonna go ahead and do this because some of you are actually going to have to wire this up. So just go ahead and release that. Over here we can see the numbering system. So we see pin number one is at this end, and then pin number six is at this end. So since the pins start here, we have one, two, three, and number three is where you need to enter that pin if you don't already have one. So since I'm pre-wired for it, I can actually go ahead and just snap that back into place. And if your car is not wired for it, which is part of the reason we wanted to do this video to show you if you're pre-wired and if you're not. So what you wanna do is yet again, feed your wire through this space right here, pull your wire up, feed a wire through here, pull it up, and then put that wire into place. Then what you can do at this point is you can go ahead, snap that back in. And at this point you can even go ahead and put these screws back in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that here. Go ahead and tighten all these back down. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are actually going to install the paddle shifters and also the new back plate that has cutouts for the paddle shifters themselves. So on the back of the wheel, you'll notice that there are three screw holes. These are all T20s, so go ahead and carefully remove these. All right, so once you've removed all three of these screws, go ahead and turn it around. There are two more screws. There's one right here. Go ahead and remove that. And there's one over here. All right, so once you've removed those screws, what you can do is just very carefully just go in here and start to separate the trim. So you have that, the front piece there. Then you have these controls. Then you have the back piece. Now, these controls are intertwined into the back piece. So just make sure that you go in here and unclip it and this piece will come right out. Now, if your wheel had paddle shifters on it before, there will be a hole right here, and what that hole allows you to do is be able to have a screw to lock everything in place. Now, most wheels, like my wheel here, it doesn't have a, a screw hole. So what we need to do is we need to make a hole right there and then right here so that we can lock this in place. Otherwise, the screw hole is right here. There's just nowhere to screw it in. Now, in an effort to mount the paddle shifters, what we need to do is we need to drill a hole 
in the actual steering wheel if yours doesn't have one already for the actual screw itself. Again, this is where that screw is going to mount in. Just go ahead and grab your, your new backing plate and then feed this wire through this little square opening right here. And then you'll be able to do a test fit to see where this is going to want to sit. The next thing you're going to want to do is just tape a, take a piece of electrical tape Just very lightly press it in place right there. Now what I like to do at this point is I, I like to use a chalk marker. You can use a paint marker. Then what you can do is just really take a lot of that on there, whether it's paint or whether it's chalk. Uh, the nice thing about chalk is it, it wipes off pretty easy. And just go ahead, put this in here. And just go ahead and just give it a good press and just hold it there for a second. And by doing so, you can see exactly where I need to be drilling. One of the things that you can do is you can just go ahead and find the angle and then just draw just a very rough line as to the angle that you have to actually go through. So let's go ahead and let's drill that out. Now to do this, I am using a 5 16 bit. Then what you can do is go ahead and you can do a test fit. Make sure that everything is going to be lined up exactly where you need it. So that, that seems like a really great spot for now. All right, so when you're test fitting, you may notice that this back portion here doesn't really sit flush. And the reason for that is because there's these three little plastic pegs that stick out. So what you can do is you can drill another hole or what they just say you can drill a dimple. In, in this spot right here. And what that'll do is that'll account for that space. So what you can do is you can spend as much or as little time on this as you like. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and drill a hole right here. And uh, just, just a little one, I'm probably going to go more for a dimple than an actual hole. And we'll do some more test fitting and get it to a place where it looks really good. All right, so as you can see, it sits much better. Uh, it looks absolutely perfect at this point. So just by drilling that little bit of a dimple, it made a huge difference because before it was sticking out and you can see this bottom part, but now it all sits really nice. So let's go ahead. We're going to just go ahead and, and do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, so at this point, both sides have the holes and they also have the dimple so everything is looking fantastic at this point so what we're going to do now is we're going to just go ahead and put these electronics back in the one over here one over here i'm just going to replace the screw because this screw is going to be under the paddle shifter so you want to make sure that you do this sooner rather than later so then we'll go ahead and put the other one here all right so once you've done that Go ahead and install your paddle shifters. Make sure that you line everything up. And go ahead and do the other one. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to install our new wiring harness. So what this is going to do is this is going to replace this one. So just go ahead, disconnect this from right there. Disconnect this round, this grounding location. It's just a, a T20. this off of here like so and you can just take this and set it out of the way okay. then you can get your new wiring harness and you can reinsert that pin that you just removed and go back with that same screw in that same location as you can see here and just reground this
like so. And you take this connection right here. Pop that on just like that. This connection is going to need to stay free. All right, so once you've done all that, we have two connections left. We have our paddle shifter on the left and our paddle shifter on the right. So the way that you tell them apart is you just pull this wire out and the one that's the furthest away is the one on the right side. And then the other blue connection is your left. Just go ahead, connect everything like so. And then what you can start to do is you can start to um, tuck these wires and start to push them out of the way. Once you've done that, go ahead and snap in your, your front trim. And once you've installed that front trim, just don't forget these two screws right here. Just one right there. And there's one on the other side. So here's a shot at what everything looks like. You can see the, the shifters are sitting nice. And everything looks awesome. Then don't forget that, that last screw, it goes on the bottom of your trim. Let's go ahead, screw that in, and you're all set. So let's go ahead and throw it back on the car and try it out. All right, so now what you need to do is go ahead and find that little groove that you had before. Just line it up with the groove that's in there. Okay. And just go ahead and snap that into place. All right, so now go ahead and grab that, that bolt. You can bolt your wheel back down. Make sure that you go to the correct spec to your car. So we're just gonna hand tighten it now, and then after the video's done, we're gonna come back and we're gonna torque it down to spec. Okay, so once you've done that, go ahead and plug your harness back in, then carefully grab your airbag. Press that back into place, make sure it's fully inserted with your airbag. You're just gonna go ahead, snap it into place. Just go ahead and pop this rear trim back in. And it just pretty much slides right in. All right, so then take that piece of top trim. Just go ahead and insert it in here. Snap that in. Go ahead and snap back in your leather. So at this point, everything looks absolutely amazing. It matches spot on because everything's BMW OEM. The last part of this is you do have to code your car or have it coded. So if you look in the description, we did put the parameter that you do have to have coded to make this fully functional. All right, now for the moment of truth. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in drive, push it over. So when I press it up, you can see it went to M2 and then when I Press it down, it goes back to M1. Now because I'm not moving, you can put it up to five and then it'll default to the highest gear possible. So that's why it's defaulting to M2. So everything is fully functional and I can't wait to drive it. So again, here's a look at what everything looks like. You can see that it looks just absolutely incredible. Here's a little side shot. Just have a little bit of chalk, I have to remove it. Um, so here you can see the movement. Again, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. And that is how you do the F80 M3 paddle shifter conversion on a 2013 F30 335. Again, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. As always, make sure you give us a nice big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for more. We'll be back. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.